Hi everybody, I wanted to put together potentially my last video of connecting the dots between all the solar eclipses, the rapture, and the Shroud of Turin. There's a connection there. Nineveh, Taurus, the sign of the judge, and the Revelation 15 sign, which is for who will be left here after the rapture. And this will be their seven-year sign, like the Revelation 12 sign was our seven-year sign between 2017 and 2024. And with that, I believe that it strongly shows. So I think what I'm presenting here is that 2024 is in fact the year and even more so the rapture of the heart potso uh, the catching away is i but i believe between now and may 18th so with that i'll go from here so please forgive my dog for snoring in the background uh, she's taking her uh nap and please forgive my raspy voice because I have allergies going on pretty badly right now. So anyways, so here's some of the stuff I'm going to be presenting uh, today. Uh, I know this list, laundry list looks long, but some of this is going to be a repeat of previous videos and what others have covered as well. And some of it will go quickly. And some of it I need to go into a little bit more details. But so I'm going to cover a little bit of the first and second Nineveh eclipses. But I call them 40 days of Jonah. And then yet 40 days. And that's to May 18, 2024. The Revelation 15 sign. Uh, which I believe will be a warning to people going forward but i want to bring it up here and this isn't in any particular order and that's also this sign also occurs on may 18th uh, there's the taurus constellation with the ion aleph noon hebrew letters there's also the shroud of turin specifically jesus burial necklace and its connection with Nineveh. Then there's the Corpus Christi, Texas, and the Shroud of Turin connection. And then there's all of the Texas connections with the Ring of Fire annular solar eclipse and this coming solar eclipse on April 8th, specifically with Corpus Christi and Eagle Pass. And then I'll touch just for a, a brief moment on the red heifers. And there's probably one more I can add to this laundry list. But And since this might be my final video, I want to acknowledge all my brothers and sisters in Christ. And specifically, but not limited to uh, Repo Man 64 Mike and I have been emailing. The last couple of years on my thoughts, uh, Ricardo Garcia with the Pyram rapture stuff, and then uh, Truth Love Light. She's been sending me tons of information, especially on the 313 menorah, as well as other stuff. Aaron at Got a Minute, who's been covering the Nineveh eclipse and all the other upcoming stuff associated with this April 8th, uh, 2024 eclipse. And of course, there's Dr. Barry Ah, Steve Fletcher 222, Supernatural by Design, who's also done Pyram stuff. I have various information, but he goes into great detail on his channel, which is Nick Vanderlane, Rapture Saint, George at Return of the King, Yako at God's Roadmap to the End, Gev T, Brother Patrick at A Rapture Hourly Watch, then Chu Chet Thinking Out Loud, End Times, and then the other Patrick, End Time Watchman, along with my email, Brother in Christ, Felipe, 
who's in Chile, South America. And there are also so many other YouTube channels which are excellent that, and again, I'm not limited to just these channels. But since the time is getting ever so short, I wanted to make acknowledgments to my brothers and sisters in Christ. And, uh, and it's only from the contribution of everybody that we're able to piece together all of this great puzzle. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. Also, please like and share this video so that it helps the algorithm and this information gets out pertaining to the upcoming total solar eclipse and the Revelation 15 sign, which I'll have at the very end of this video for other family members going forward. So, and with that, I'll go from here. So with this upcoming total solar eclipse on April 8th, 2024, which I'm calling the Nineveh Eclipse, and that's because this eclipse traverses over in its pathway nine Ninevehs going from Nineveh, Texas, all the way through Nineveh, Nova Scotia, and Canada. And that, again, that's on this upcoming eclipse on April 8th. So I saw this map or, or something similar to it on Chucha's channel. So I thought I created myself, but only going from Nineveh, Texas to Nineveh, Nova Scotia. And it ends up being 2,527 miles. So I thought this looked so much like the seven days or seven years and 2,520 days associated with a time of Jacob's trouble or Daniel's 70th week. So then that spurred me on to think even more so pertaining to this. So since there was an additional seven tagged on to the 2520 miles, which I think represents, like I said, the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven years, 2,520 days, the seven additional miles, if you look at it, it could be seven years ago, which is when the first total solar eclipse occurred on August 21st, 2017. And I'm calling that the first and end of a total solar eclipse because back then we were looking at this closely. And if you added 40 days to that, it fell on the Day of Atonement, but it was also seven days after the Revelation 12 sign, which I think most of you are familiar with. So from August 21st, 2017, the first total solar eclipse that traversed across the United States, you add 40 days to that, you came up with September 30th, 2017, and that was Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement then. So I believe that's what the 2,527 miles represents with the additional seven miles representing both seven years ago since our first total solar eclipse traversed across the United States to this upcoming one on April 8th, 2024. So from 2017 to 2024, and also seven days prior to the Yom Kippur sign on September 30th, 2017 was the Revelation 12 sign. And I'll include that briefly here for those of you who are new and aren't familiar with that. So seven days prior to Yom Kippur on September 30th, 2017, was the Revelation 12 sign, which occurred on September 23rd, 2017. And this is a once in 7,000 year sign. So Revelation 12 verses one and two were fulfilled back then. 
and it reads, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, and that was the nine stars that make up the constellation of Leo, but at that time the three wandering stars or planets Venus, Mars, and Mercury came into that proximity, making a total of 12. So upon her head, a crown of 12 stars, and she being with child cried, and that was the planet Jupiter that was in the belly of the womb of Virgo for 42 weeks, and then it exited the womb, and she being with child travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. So we believe that this sign, the Revelation 12 verses 1 and 2 sign was fulfilled on that date on September 23rd, 2017. But these seven days could also represent the seven days prior to the onset of Daniel's 70th week in which Noah and his family went into the ark prior to the onset of the flood. So that map only covered the cities named Nineveh that are in the pathway of the upcoming total solar eclipse on April 8th. And I believe, as Aaron said at God a Minute, that those are the only Ninevehs in the whole United States, and they're along that pathway of this upcoming solar eclipse. But also, there's a city named Jonah, Texas, and interestingly, from Jonah, Texas, to the first Nineveh that's encountered in the pathway, which is Nineveh, Texas, the distance from Jonah, Texas, to Nineveh, Texas, is 153 miles. And that seems to allude to the 153 fishes that is mentioned in John 21, verse 20. So with the 2,027 miles, which alludes to seven years plus the 2,520 days of Daniel's 70th week or a time of Jacob's trouble, seven years prior to that was 2017 through 2024. I think we can pretty safely say that the onset of Daniel's 70th week, a time of Jacob's trouble, will be this year, 2024. So now going back to the April 8th, 2024 pathway with not just the Ninevehs, but its entry point into the United States occurs at Eagle Pass, Texas. So for this upcoming eclipse on April 8th, the entry point into the United States, which is at Eagle Pass, Texas, it crosses over the pink line here, which is the Rio Grande River from Mexico at Piedras Negras over to Eagle Pass, Texas. And that's about the extent of my Spanish. But, um, but that's where the red heifers were bred along with red Angus bulls. And this is where the Israeli bought the red heifers from. So at Eagle Pass and Buena Vista and areas around that, that's where the red heifers are actually bred along with red Angus bulls. It was stated that the Israeli bought the red heifers from Eagle Pass, brought them down the Rio Grande River, and then over to Israel. And 40 days after this total solar eclipse is what I'm calling the second uh, Nineveh eclipse, which is the second total eclipse that forms the X across the United States. And that's the one with all the Nineveh cities along its pathways. 40 days later, you end up with May 18th of 2024. And that's Sivan 15, which is Shavuot, 
or some people refer to it as Pentecost. So on May 18th also, the sun is in the constellation of Taurus, which is the sign of judgment, that being Christ the judge. So before I go a little bit into the Taurus constellation, I don't have very much on it. Let me read Genesis 1.14 for the folks saying this is not biblical, that this is astrology. It says in verse 14, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, which is the Maseroth, which is God's heavenly astronomy, and for seasons, and for days, and years. So notice that signs is mentioned first. So again on May 18th, the sun is in the sign of Taurus, which is the sign of judgment. And if you look at the sign of Taurus on May 18th, so you have the bull's head, which forms the olive, which is the first Hebrew letter. And then the eye highlighted here, his left eye, if uh, he's facing towards you, is the star Ayan. And Ayan can be spelled with a Y, which is also a letter in the Hebrew alphabet. And then the red eye, which is the right eye of the bull, the star Aldebaran, is the 14th brightest star in the heavens, and the 14th Hebrew letter is noon. So in essence, the sign Taurus is forming the iron, olive, noon, and Hebrew is read from right to left. And again, iron, also spelled iron, is the left eye of the bull highlighted here. The olive is the bull's head Taurus, and Aldebaran, the red star here, is the 14th largest star in the heavens, and noon is the 14th Hebrew letter, thus it being Ayan Aleph Noon. So again, Hebrew is read from right to left, so if you look at the Ayan Aleph Noon, and here it is in the Hebrew letters, ayin, which is silent, but it's equal to 70. Aleph is also silent, is equal to a value of 1. And noon, which is equal to a value of 50. When you add up 50 plus 1 plus 70, you get 121. Interestingly, Nineveh is also equal to a value of 121. Nineveh is spelled from right to left. Noon, Yod, Noon, Vav, Hey. And I put it here from left to right for, for us that reside in the Americas. So that's the value of 50 plus 10 for the Yod plus 50 for the Noon plus 6 for the Vav plus 5 for the Hey. It equals a total of 121. Thus, the sign of Taurus, the Ion Aleph Noon, and Nineveh both equal 121. So, since the Ion Aleph Noon is pronounced as Noon, like the Noon Day, the letter Hebrew letter Noon in the Aramaic means fish. And there's a, a cute little play on Psalms 119, which covers noon. And there was a cute little children's thing on noon. It says, no darkness. Your word is a light unto my path like noonday sunshine. But from the Bible, and I won't read all of this. I would recommend you guys go back and read this for yourself. And that's Psalms 119. Verses 105 to 112. This pertains to the letter noon. It says in verse 105, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. 
And then I would just go back and read the rest. And the rest of it says, forever to the very end. And that's the truth. So I thought I saved the best for the end, and that's the annular solar eclipse, the ring of fire, which occurred on October 14, 2023, and the Shroud of Turin connection. So on October 14, 2023, when the annular solar eclipse or ring of fire eclipse traversed across the United States, it exited Texas at Corpus Christi exactly at noon central daylight time and um, that's just the angle of the trajectory but so this occurred at noon in which the annular solar eclipse left the United States going into the Gulf of Mexico and many of you know that Corpus Christi means the body of Christ and the fact that this annular solar eclipse ring of fire exited Corpus Christi at noon, this was the very same hour that darkness fell over the land in Jerusalem during Christ's crucifixion. And then noon sounds like the Hebrew letter noon, which I just showed in the sign of Taurus. So with Corpus Christi, meaning the body of Christ, and the Shroud of Turin being the image of the body of Christ, and that annular solar eclipse ring of fire exited the United States at noon, the same time that darkness fell over Jerusalem during Christ's crucifixion, and the Shroud of Turin being his burial cloth, you have this body of Christ connection. So going on further with the Shroud of Turin, they also discovered, in addition to the coins that were placed on Jesus' eye, that from more recent scans, they discovered that Jesus also had a Jewish pantalon, which is a burial pendant, placed on the neck of the deceased. And so it's shown here, and they were able to determine that the letters from right to left in Hebrew was the Ion Aleph Nun, identical to what is shown in the heavens with the constellation of Taurus. So here's the enhanced scan showing the pantalon that's below Jesus' neck or the pendant on, placed on his neck. And here's what Jewish burial pendants look like. And then here's the iron olive noon that they got from the skin. And that's the same again as Taurus being the bull and the judge. So here again with the heavenly sign, Ion Olive Noon, the same thing that was placed on the burial pendant that was on Jesus' neck, that equal to 121, along with the Hebrew letters that spell out Nineveh, 121 as well. And as with the number 121, that spells both Nineveh and is on the burial plate on Jesus' neck, and it is also in the heavens with the spelling of Taurus being Ion Olive Noon. You have embedded in Psalms 121, not Saul, which is the Strong's 5337, which actually is another word for Harpazo, and I'll cover that next. But reading the Hebrew letters, from right to left, and this is all of one Psalms 121 verses 1 through 8. You have equal letter spacing of the letter noon, then 30 spaces, and you get to the letter tzadich, and then you go across another 30 letters, 
and you end up with Lamet. And that's Noon Tzadik Lamet. And that's the word Natsal, which means Harpatso in the Hebrew. And here's the Strong's 5337 Natsal, which is Noon Tzadik Lamet, another word Natsal. It means to deliver, to escape, to rescue, to take out, but specifically to snatch away, deliver, rescue, save. So it's the same in the Hebrew as the Greek word harpazo. So with the Shroud of Turin, specifically with Jesus' burial pentalon or his pendant on his neck, which has the letters Hebrew letters, ayin, aleph, nun, which equal the value of 121 in the Hebrew. With the number 121, the ayin, aleph, nun, is also the same value of the Hebrew word Nineveh. It's also what the heavenly sign Taurus, the judge, spells out. And also in Psalms 121, which is a Harpazo rapture Bible passage, which is also related to the Harpazo or rapture. It has equal letter spacing of Natsal, which is the Hebrew word for the Greek equivalent of Harpazo, which is the Latin equivalent of rapture. So that was quite the tongue twister. So Natsal in the Hebrew is snatching away, escaping, being delivered, which is the Greek word for harpazo, which means the same thing, which is the Greek 726 in the Strong's, which is the Latin word rapturo, which became anglicized to be rapture. But all of this is encoded in the Shroud of Turin, specifically in Jesus' burial pendant. So also 40 days, yet 40 days after the upcoming April 8th total solar eclipse that makes it X across the United States over Little Egypt, 40 days later, which is May 18, 2024, is also the Revelation 15 sign, which is the great and marvelous sign. So also 40 days after the upcoming April 8th total solar eclipse, the second total solar eclipse that traverses the United States forming the X over Little Egypt, Illinois, you end up with May 18th. And I had just did a video my last one was, that's the same day that Mount St. Helens erupted. So please go back and watch that, my last video. But also on May 18th, that is Savon 15th, which is Shavuot. And many of you call it Pentecost. And it's also the date that the Revelation 15 sign occurs. So you might be asking, what is the Revelation 15 sign, which is a great and marvelous sign? So in Revelation 15, verses 1 and 2, it's the prelude to the bold judgments or vile judgments. And it says, Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them the wrath of God is complete. And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire. And it goes on to state more. So the Revelation 12 sign verses 1 and 2 was fulfilled back in September 23rd of 2017. Whereas now we're going to get the Revelation 15 sign verses 1 and 2 on May 18th as well. So I had put out a video on the Revelation 15 sign 
about 10 months ago, but like uh, many of us, once we put out a few videos or quite a few, uh, they kind of get buried in the background. So here's a brief overview. I hadn't realized until I went back and looked that it actually falls on May 18th as well, which is 40 days after the total solar eclipse that's coming up in April. And here is the lineup for the Revelation 15 sign, as I understand it, with all the planetary lineup occurring behind the sun, or to the right of it, I should say. And there's a couple of conjunctions. There's the Sun-Jupiter conjunction, also with the Venus-Uranus conjunction. And Uranus means heavens, or Uranus. And at the tail of it is the comet Enki, which is what I believe fire mingled with ice that's described in Revelation 15. So what I think that makes this a great and marvelous sign is that last one was from Stellarium, but this one is a solar system top-down view. Over here is from Stellarium. You have the red star Aldebaran, and I mirrored it so that you end up with the red planet Mars. And so it says in Job 9.9, Who maketh Arcturus and Orion in the Hyades? And Hyades is just the center V-shape or triangle shape. And the inner parts of the south. So this is yet another Bible verse where God is showing or God is talking about the Maseroth and the stars. And you can see if you line these up, here's the top view with the sun, Venus, the earth, Mercury's over here, and Mars. And I also recall from that video that there were a few comments as to why do I have the sun as the center of the solar system. And that's not the perspective of the flat earth so the answer to that is they don't have any software that has the flat earth point of view so uh so this is good as it's gonna get but you can still see the lineup nonetheless with the red star again aldebaran slightly to the right higher right and again, the red planet Mars slightly to the higher right. And they form the same exact geometry from the, the 2D point of view and the top-down view of the solar system. And that is indeed an incredible, great, and marvelous sign. So in Stellarium, you have the sun and then the Sun-Jupiter conjunction, you can't hardly see Jupiter because it's being blinded by the Sun, and the Uranus-Venus conjunction, all in, I would say, the elbow of Taurus the Bull. And at that time, the Sun is in the constellation of Taurus the Bull. I should have had this to the left to be consistent. And then to the left you have that same formation as well from the top-down view of the solar system with the sun, the earth being the Uranus-Venus conjunction representative, and then the Pleiades, the seven stars that make up the seven churches, is in the position of where Mars is. So again, that's a second sign that's a part of the Revelation 15 signs. So it's actually, again, great and marvelous. And finally, as a part of the Revelation 15 sign, along with the Sun and Jupiter plus the Venus Uranus conjunctions in Taurus, you have the six planetary lineup of the seven angels with the last seven plagues or vials, which is the wrath of God, and that's mentioned in Revelation 15, verse 1. 
And you can see also in Revelation chapter 1, verse 20, that stars equal angels. So you have the seven stars, which are the seven angels. And then the comet Anki, or 2P Anki, is at the end of the heavenly planetary lineup. And I believe this is the sea of glass mixed with fire. So you can see, here's an actual photo of the comet Anki. And it does look like a sea of glass with the backdrop of the stars mingled with fire. So uh, I believe that's what the Revelation 12 sign is. And again, this occurs on May 18th. But I don't think the vials are going to be poured out on the earth at that time. Just like with our Revelation 12 sign from 2017 was our wake up call and warning for seven years. I think this will be the Revelation 15 sign to the people after the rapture, possibly between now and May 18th. So there's a lot of, I mean, there's, so there's Purim coming up, this total solar eclipse, Passover, second Passover, and Sukkot, or many, many people call it Pentecost, but I believe the two are distinctive, but I, I'm not going to split hairs over that. So here's a link to the Revelation 15 sign that I did about 10 months ago. And again, it fell on May 18, 2024. But my uh, warrior sister, Truth Love Life, she's got another video with the different timing than myself. But I don't think it's that much of a difference still. I think hers is about a month earlier. But I see May 18th, and that's the day that the Mount St. Helens erupted 44 years ago. So please watch my last video prior to this one. This is the 40 days after the April 8th total solar eclipse. And it's also the day of Sivan 15, which is Shavuot or Pentecost, as I said, for some people. And again, that's kind of splitting hairs because... Either way, if there's a rapture on that day, uh, it's still a rapture. <laughs> so the time is getting ever, ever so short. And you see all the connections that I just shown in this video, including the Shroud of Turin, Jesus pendant on his neck, the Nineveh, the other signs, the Taurus sign, the Ion Olive Noon and the 121 connection with Nineveh and the pendant that Jesus has on the Shroud of Turin from the updated scans plus Psalm 121, which has an equal letter spacing that spells out Natsal in the Hebrew, which means to catch away, to snatch away, to deliver. And that's the Hebrew equivalent of the Greek word harpazo. So I think the rapture is coming very soon, or the harpazo, if some people prefer to use that terminology. So please get saved today. The time is ever, ever so short. And the but the good news is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died for our sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day. And there are other excellent videos that describe the good news and getting saved much better and more eloquently than I ever could. But just the same, the time is ever, ever so short. There is no time left. So please do that today because firstly, tomorrow's not promised, but you want to be saved no matter what's going to transpire between now and and May 18th of this year as I see it. And I do see the rapture. All evidence is pointing to this year of 2024. Anyways, I hope this video has been a blessing. 
I know it's kind of longer than my other videos, but I thought it was very important, critical, urgent information to get out. So I wanted to do that as soon as possible. And anyways, if I don't see you with the next video, hopefully this is my final video. I'll see you in the air. Take care.